tell us a little bit about your backstory that um, I think you grew up with a single parent and did you come from financial hardship and tell us about some of the challenges and trials and tribulations that you've experienced. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, the short version on that is just grew up, you know, full blown in poverty, um, not no generational wealth, no um, real support system there. Um, you know, a lot of basic needs weren't met along the way. Um, stuff that, you know, it's easy to take for granted when you have it, but, um, you know, when you, when you don't have the things that you need, it's, it can be hard to focus on regular things in life, like school, like sports, like, you know, just having that self-esteem and being kind of on that, uh, state of normality that we would think of, so. Yeah, definitely presented challenges, but at the end of the day, I think it really offered more than it took away. And what I mean by that is it uh, having those challenges, having those struggles, it does something. If you're willing to face it and go through it, it fortifies you in a way that it, it gives you certain strengths and resilience that can only be earned, I'll say. And I think that's played a big part in becoming who I am and kind of having the perception and the focus that I do in business and in life. Right on. So, all right, but just... Walk us through it a little bit. So you you grew up in financial hardship. So how did you, tell us about your business experience because I know a big part of what you're doing is trying to help other people be self-employed and have financial freedom. So how did you kind of figure it out? Did you just, were you the kid that had the lemonade stand, you know, at 12? And then, you know, did you have a series of jobs that you hated? And then you were like, I want to work for myself. Like, how did you actually climb to become your own business owner? Yeah, so that part is interesting. I think I can't say um, 100% whether or not the entrepreneurial spirit is something that we're born with or whether it can be, I'm sure it can be cultivated or if it's a mix of both. I don't know, you know, definitively on that, but for sure at a young age, you know, I've always had that drive, that spirit to say, oh man, I could, I could do this. I remember um, like fixing my own bike when I was like wow. six, six or seven years old. Wow. <laughs> the chain would pop, you know, I would oil the chain, the chain would pop off, I'd put it back on or uh, change the brakes on it. And I remember thinking like, oh, I could, I could fix other kids' bikes and just charge them a few bucks, you know, and start. So I was always thinking like that I always had that those concepts in mind um, that I I wonder if we all have that and then it's maybe shut down or I don't know what that process is in terms of you know that young of an age but that was certainly those were certainly concepts that were in my head very early just kind of based on who I am, I guess, because no one around me was doing their own business. No one around me was really mentally geared in that direction. But for some reason, that's, that's always been a focus for me. So that said, I've always had ideas. I've always uh, been that analytical kid, you know, seeing how things work and um, optimizing things in my own mind, like, okay, well, what if I, what if I do it this way? Or what if I do this? And that was somewhat encouraged along the way and somewhat of an annoyance, I think, to like my dad. So it would be, um, I might figure out how to fix something. And he's like, oh man, how'd you do that? Or that's, that's a great idea. And sometimes it could get a little, you know, a little much because it's always, it's always going. Sometimes it gets a little much for me. It's something that I just can't turn off. So I'm always 
thinking in those terms. I'm always looking at things um, from a standpoint of how they can be better. And I think that's kind of the true essence of any business. It really goes back to first principles thinking. So with that in mind, I don't, I, I never, I started going to college for business degree. I did one year at community college and that was that because I made a business decision in my mind, which was, okay, after this next year, I'm either going to go get in six figures of debt and then come out and disclaimer, I'm, there's, there's no, uh, nothing against getting a degree. But with my situation, I was going to have to pay out of pocket, have no support, and have to be working full time. So get in massive debt six figures in debt by the time I have my degree, be working low income jobs the whole time, and then come out and maybe make in the range of 50 grand a year for the next five to seven years. But generally speaking, maybe it'd be better, maybe it'd be worse because in high school and even before that I was working at jobs with people who had their master's degrees, people who were had their nursing degree, had their MBA, had their doctorate, and they were working at food restaurants. I mean, I'm not going to name which ones, but they were working at restaurants that you, you know, you would not, you would not think that people with their degrees and all these qualifications and they're very intelligent and they couldn't get a job, you know? So there's more on education and and much more that we could go into on the philosophy of whether or not it's worth it. But I personally decided that going that route was not worth it for me. And so I got busy creating and going through the process of trial and error myself in the real world. And so I, I was, constantly learning between YouTube, Google, whatever. Um, You can learn anything self-taught. The downside is it's spread out everywhere. So it's like Easter egg hunting. You gotta, you gotta look all around. You gotta sort through things to actually figure out what's valid information, what's not. And the way I navigated that process was just kind of letting my intuition recognize something as truth or not, this makes sense or it doesn't. And then I would take action, put these things into work and reality. And over time, through trial and error, through multiple attempts at starting a business, I finally figured out um, sort of a sweet spot, you could say, in the market or a a tactical approach, tactical business approach that could work for anyone from ground zero, starting up a new business and just going out and making money. And for me, that discovery was starting a service related business. And my first service related business that was successful was actually a lawn care business. And I basically got a trailer. I had a mower already, just a push mower. Um, I got a cheap weed eater on sale from Home Depot and just kind of my basic stuff that I thought I would need. Um, I spoke to a friend of mine who was already doing lawn care full time, got some pointers from him. I also looked on YouTube and was just kind of sorting through YouTube channels that give you tips and um, information on running a lawn care business. And then I just went out and started knocking on doors, you know, and within the first day, I actually, the first two days, I'll say, (laughs) um, something happened on the first day, which I'll go into, you probably heard this story already, but I haven't shared it on here. So I will cover that. But 
within the first day of actually knocking on doors, you know, I had like 10 clients. And um, so that doesn't sound like a lot, but at $40 a piece, um, you know, that's $400 worth of additional income right there in one day that I didn't have before. So it was really a big deal and it, it allowed me to survive and not only survive, but begin to thrive because I would make more in two days working for myself than I would that whole week, you know, working at my job. So it kind of was something I always knew could be possible, but now it was tangible. And now I had this paradigm shift happen within my reality. So the way that I learned to do what I'm doing is simply relentless effort, relentless effort, a lot of trial and error, a lot of failure. <laughs> I could probably write like five books on failure. That's, but I, 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 I lose track of who actually said the quote, but um, basically the quote is something like, if you want to increase your wins, you have to increase your failure rate. So I, I truly believe in that. I've lived that and I still live it. Everything I do does not work out. But if you put forth that relentless effort, if you know yourself and you know what you want and you know what you're capable of and you don't let anyone else get in the way of that process, you just go for it. You put forth that relentless effort be willing to fail because every time you do, you're going to learn. And that, that is literally how I started a business from nothing, from being in, in debt, credit card debt, being upside down on the bills to making way more money than I ever would at any job. Um, just there's, there's no comparison to me. I'm a firm believer. I'm an absolutist in the sense that I believe everyone would be better off working for themselves.